yeah. you knew something was in the office. Yeah, yeah. we didn't know it was Southampton today. was one of the places, all around Southampton, and all the areas around there where everything was being collected. I mean, all the main roads were just tell to one another of tanks and big transport uh, and being congregated for a long time. We lived in Shoring, about a mile from where Western Shore was. We couldn't even get anywhere near Western Shore uh, because of all the landing craft that, that I knew was down there. Yeah. Because at that time, one of my jobs was also in the Home Guards. I was a sergeant um, of a platoon that manned the guns of a night time there, the anti-aircraft guns overlooking Southampton Water, so I could see myself, the big build-up down there. But the first intimation of the day itself was during the early hours of one morning where we heard this terrific drone of aircraft. It just wasn't an ordinary, um, what can I say, ordinary sound of invading aircraft. It was just one unholy noise. There must have been hundreds and hundreds of aircraft coming over. And I know we couldn't see anything, but um, it was the beginning of it when they, uh, because all, also all around Southampton, there were places where they were amassing these gliders around the new forest, um, Cadnam Way. In our travels prior to that, maybe a little John Brown, we'd noticed big areas of clearing in the new forest where there was loads and loads of these glider type of aircraft with no engines to. And of course, when they left there, they, wherever the, uh, they were pulling them from, you imagine the number of aircraft they'd have to have to pull them. But it was very particularly noisy with aircraft that night, so when I heard the noise I knew something had started then, because we were waiting for the day that everyone knew it was going to happen to live around Southampton, obviously. You could see signs of it because people still had to go to employment. I had to go to Hamble, cycle to Hamble every morning, and of course we could see the build up on the roads and we could see the activity all just waiting but no one knew when it was going to happen but as soon as I did hear this big noise of aircraft engines in the sky I knew that was it and of course when we got up it was on the news that the invasion had taken place as it got towards D-Day and in the dark we filled up to choking point almost with landing craft small ships, bits of the Mulberry Harbour, which we didn't really know what it was, but we'd made some very good guesses, and all the paraphernalia that eventually took its place in D-Day. And yeah, as you felt then that this was very much the turning of the tide, not much longer to go. The air raids, of course, had dropped off. had been dropping off for some time, and had dropped off fairly sharply, and you weren't seeing much more than the occasional observation plane. And of course with the news that was coming back, you felt that, well, this must be it. And of course we were prepared with all sorts of spare parts and facilities for taking care of the landing craft that had crossed the channel and returned, fully expecting them to come back with, well, a gun barrel shot away and all sorts of damage, naturally enough. 